Okay, so we're joined today by Arby Yemeni. So he's a rising figure in the Melbourne right-wing nationalist movement. Thanks for joining us, Arby. Maybe not nationalist, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that has a, a dirty connotation uh, we'll to it. We'll go conservative then. Conservative, what do you I'm awesome. more happy with that. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining us, Arby. So I, I thought I'd get the ball rolling, just um, asking you a little bit of, uh, about your background, I suppose. So obviously, you're in the Israeli military before returning to Australia and getting involved in political activism. Could you just give us a bit more of a uh, rundown on um, what exactly led you to a, um, an involvement in political activism? I guess, look, I, I um, like, I think most of the silent, the, the, the general silent majority, um, I was getting pretty fed up with what I saw, and everybody obviously comes from their, their uh, history and their background, kind of defines them. I think my service and the idea, I saw firsthand a lot of, um, a lot of the, the things that were being spread in the media and, and, and general misconceptions that bothered me. Um, and I thought, I'm just going to start voicing it. At first, I started voicing it on my business page, um, and I did, I did cop a fair bit of criticism, and, and I think rightly so. I think it, I think it was good to se uh, separate it, and that's when I, I opened my own page for it. Okay, interesting. And how many years did you spend in the idea? Three years. Three a bit years. under three years, yeah. Okay, and, and upon returning to Australia, you then opened your gym and went yep, from there, Yep, so idea of training and... Uh, yeah, got in trouble for that one. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Okay, so obviously you you have been involved in the um, you know the broader I suppose right wing movement within Australia and Melbourne specifically. How have you found that, given that you are a Jewish man, there's obviously a lot of anti semitism within that movement. How have you found the, the acceptance? Of it? Yeah, look, I've never I've never asked to be accepted with any of these groups. I don't really care if any specific group accept, accepts me or doesn't. I've never based anything on that. I've just spoken what I see to be um, the truth and what the way I see it, which I think everybody should. Um, there are obviously elements within the right wing that are anti-Semitic and will never accept me just for the fact that I am a Jew. That's their loss. Yep. Um, but I'm, I'm more concerned about the alt-left and the, 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 the anti-Semitism that comes from the tolerant left. That's, that worries me because there I see a growth in um, acceptance by so many in the name of tolerance. Yeah, uh, so, so you do have political ambitions then. Um, we've heard various different rumours, whether it be um, you know, the idea that you joined One Nation, Australian Conservatives, Liberal Democrats. How do you feel in regards to your political ambitions in the long term? Look, I'm, I, I'm not so focused on which party I'll join at this stage. I'm pretty open, um, but... Uh, I'm more concerned about the ideas and anyone who, who uh, believes in the right for any of their uh, potential candidates to say what they say and generally align themselves with similar ideas, I'll be open to them. Um, it's, it's not about that, you know. Uh, everybody wants to hear that the, the little brown Jews join the white nation, the one nation white nationalist group. It's a good story. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, at the end of the day, I think it's more important that conservatives, no matter what race, religion, gender, whatever, have the opportunity to step up and speak out. That's what we need here. We need to we need to make conservatism cool cool again. It's it's kind of a dirty word in Australia at the moment um, because the left kind of try to paint it as the old white angry old white man politics, which it isn't. It's actually just people who have half a brain. It's called common sense. That's conservative to me. Yeah, so you would describe yourself as a conservative then rather than a nationalist or a libertarian? Or yeah, look, I, I'm, I'm probably a mix between conservative to libertarian. No, I'm, I, I'm not a... I'm also sort of a national. Look, I'm, I'm a proud Australian um, and I'm a proud Zionist. A Zionist is, a, is an Israeli nationalist, really. And I, I don't think that that's a bad thing. I think it's good. I think everyone should be happy about their own uh, national uh, culture and, and, and background. And they should want to preserve all the good things about Australia. We shouldn't want to lose that. But some, some of these words, like nationalism, they come with, unfortunately, they've been hijacked a little bit and they come with this sort of wrong connotation. So I, I need to be careful and choose them choose them a little carefully what I describe myself as. I'd probably say conservative libertarian. I see, yeah. Uh, so obviously you've got quite a, um, a substantial social media presence at the yep. moment. Um, you've got a massive supporter base. I just want to know a little bit more about how you've established yourself in that regard and what do you think 
it is specifically that's made you so successful within the realm of social media? Um, look, I think people today, you know, I'm not the most articulate person, I'm not the most educated person. I dropped out in year eight. People today, and you can look at the rise of Donald Trump in America, or you can look at the rise of Pauline Hanson in Australia. People today are less focused on the idea of politicians having to be these crisp, sharp, educated, double speak, can I swear? <laughs> Pieces of shit. People want real, raw other people. And I think when I started speaking up, people just look at my stuff and they go, that's just a it's just someone like me who's saying what I think, not trying to politically correct it, you know, to kind of sharpen it up to make it palatable. I say it how I see it. Sometimes it's a little bit offensive, but generally it's just, it is what it is. And I think people recognize that and people, there's a hunger in the community for it. And that's the biggest mistake politicians are making today is still playing this old game of politics. We're in the social media world at the moment where the old game of politics isn't gonna work anymore because young Abhi Yaminis, young media, new media organizations, they will overtake the old system because now we have a platform where we can talk to the people at masses. My page has grown faster than any politician in Australia in growth. So it just shows that there is a hunger in the community for less politics, more realism. Just to the point, issues, solutions, harsh or not. Awesome, okay, well Abby Yemeni, thanks for your time. Thanks mate, cheers guys. This has been an Unshackled Fast. Please like, comment and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.